so here we have a Sony SSMB 150H. It is a very low budget bookshelf speaker. Here is the name tag. And you can see the binding posts there are just the cheap, you know, friction fit ones. These are not the, you know, banana style five-way binding posts. So you can already see uh, we're not off to a great start here. Uh, it's, it, you know, your standard ported box. This port is about 32 millimeters at the end here and 90 millimeters long. However, it does taper all the way back in. So I'm going to quickly uh, undo these screws and then we'll cut back once we're inside the box. Okay, now we can start to take a look inside. Now, Sony claims this is a 120 watt max speaker and I even find that hard to believe unless it's 120 watts for a very short period of time because you'll see these drivers are not particularly heavy duty. So taking a look at the woofer here first, the cone feels like, um, it feels like a standard plastic cone. I think it's just texturized. However, you will notice that there are these vents here for the spider and the spider has holes in it for venting as well. And its overall construction is actually not too bad. It is shielded, which is, you know, kind of nice to see, not really necessary in a speaker like this, but you know, it's something, we'll take it. It is a plastic frame, um, so its resonance level will be generally pretty low. So I think for this woofer, I'll give it a pass. I think this is a, a reasonable quality woofer. Again, considering these speakers retail for, from my research, it was $85 and these speakers came out in like 2004. Again, that's just from my research. If you know better, please um, say something in the comments. But another weird thing, and I apologize for the terrible white balance, is that there's this white crusty stuff. And this is on both the speakers. And I just, I can't figure out what it's from. And the suspension on these drivers is very soft. Very, very soft. So um, they would not do well in open baffle, obviously. And these will probably suffer from high excursion. So don't play super low stuff with these at high volumes. Next, we have the tweeter. And you'll also get to see the extent of the crossover. And you'll get to see what true cheap speakers are. And that's the crossover network right there. One electrolytic capacitor in series with the tweeter just to make sure it doesn't play too low. 1.5 microfarad. And this looks like just one that would be taken off of any old circuit board not designed for audio. And again, you have another Sony branded speaker here. Now you might think at first this would be like a ring radiator tweeter, but it isn't. Um, it just has a really aggressive, I wouldn't call that a face plug. I can't remember what these are called, but um, it's designed to try and make a more even response from the tweeter. All right, then down there you can see that they glued in that terminal cup and then you get one little piece of stuffing in the bottom and they also covered up the port, which I guess is to reduce vibration from the port or resonance from the port as far as like, you know, the outside of it. It's completely open in the back. You can see straight through it. So I guess I don't know exactly why they would do that but hey, you know, at least they did it. And this is only half inch coarse MDF. So yeah, nothing too fancy here on the enclosure. This is just to try and help the white balance with this, uh, with this woofer. So 
here's the problem with these speakers. And this has to do with now going into what they sound like when you listen to them. The detail in them is pretty good. And I can tell that if these had a proper crossover network, they'd sound like some good speakers. But because there is just one electrolytic capacitor in series with the tweeter, that means that this speaker is playing full range. So this is playing as high as it can, but we'll say just as high as the tweeter, and they're going to be out of phase with each other by 180, or, yeah, by 180 degrees, or is it 90 degrees? Regardless, this electrolytic capacitor will make this driver out of phase with this driver, and that's part of the complexity of building crossover networks, networks is that you need them to be in phase with each other. Well, when you are listening to this, this speaker, and if you're, you know, as you move your head up and down, so as, as the speaker would move like this in relation to you, um, you can hear the frequency response change dramatically. And the, the problem there is that while yes, you can sit at the perfect level so that you get the best frequency response at your ear, all the reflections going everywhere else in the room, especially off the ceiling, are going to have a very much out of phase frequency response. So the room sound is going to be pretty bad. Now for $85 in 2004, maybe this is what you're going to get. But you can get like, I think it's with the Noemi. I can't remember the model number, but there, and I'll, I'll put up a screenshot here. Uh, $100 can buy you these Noemi speakers that are about the same as these in terms of size and cost and everything, but they come with a proper crossover, which means they would probably measure a significant amount better than these. So you can pick these up on eBay. I've seen them from like $30 to $50. Leave them. Don't touch them. If you find these at a garage sale for maybe $5, yeah, pick them up gift them to somebody who doesn't really care too much about sound, or if you're not picky about sound, hey, you know what, for five bucks, these would be fantastic little speakers, but I can't really recommend them past that. Um, these are just ones that I found at a family member's house, and they said they didn't want them anymore, so I thought, hey, you know what, I'll take them. So these were free to me, and I will probably be re-gifting them to somebody else because I have no real use for them. So I think that's as far as we need to go for this video. Just a really quick look at some genuinely cheap speakers, and they do look nice. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, knock on Sony too hard here. They made a nice looking little speaker. It has some nice curves to it, and the grills that come with it are also, you know, they fit well. It, the curve matches, so they're good looking speakers, and, you know, if you can pick them up cheap at a garage sale, they'd be fantastic. Outside of that, you know, take your pick. Uh, and really, these are a big turnoff to me. I hate using, you know, unterminated cables. It's just a pain to take them in and out, and then it wears away at the ends of the wires. Another thing that I do like, though, is that these grills stick in really hard to the point where you actually need a tool to try and pry them off. So the fit is actually pretty good. They are, however, polystyrene, which is about the cheapest plastic you can get. Are there any upgrades of, you know, could you do upgrades to this? Yeah, you could actually try to engineer your own proper crossover network. And if you're looking to get into audio and you want to get more serious in it, this would be a really cheap way to take a speaker that already has been engineered to work but just try and engineer your own crossover instead of trying to choose your own drivers and make your own box. So I think this might be a good starter kit just for the components and the enclosure. Um, but yeah, really not, uh, not too impressed compared to other things that are available on the market and other things I've listened to and heard. So with that, uh, until next time, see ya.